So I kind of wanted to revisit using that tiny little FT120 43 core on the 40 meter band using a 40 meter end fed. So out came the painter pole again. This time uh, you can't really see it. It has a seven foot extension pole duct taped to the top. Um, the very tippy tops at 16 feet. The last test I did with a 40 meter end pad, I had tiny little 24 gauge speaker wire that broke if you even looked at it. And I liked it, it was lightweight, but it was just not quite uh, durable enough for anything. You can see the moon. So I don't need to walk up to the window, same thing. So this is, tw 18, this is 18 gauge speaker wire, strict, one conductor. Um, same thing, I don't need to walk up to the window, leaves my window at 6 feet, ends at 16 feet here, and I'm going to go in and uh, I'll show what I've been finding with both a uh, 150 picofarad shunt cap on the input to the on and with and without. So I kind of wanted to simulate just throwing a wire up over something, you know, so I think 16 feet is a realistic height, and I wanted to see uh, what bands I wanted to see what kind of what kind of functionality I get on the various bands. So this is the Anon core, the toroid core that I'm going to be testing with this uh, 65 foot long um, piece of wire as an end fed halfway for the 40 meter band. And uh, this is another uh, seven. <laughs> let me count the let me count the taps. It's another multi-tap on it. This one was an early one that I wound, and I used the crossover method with the wire, which I I no longer use. Um, main reason being, I end up what you end up with a highest impedance turn tap boy is sorry next to another tap if you don't cross over you'll end up with the highest impedance tap next to ground which i prefer but this is a ft 120 43 core it's only 1.2 inches in diameter here's one that's not been wound. Well, sorry about that. And the taps that this one is wound with are 4, 9, 16, 36. Now I wish I would have put a 25 to 1 tap on this on an, like I do my current ones because it would have been very beneficial with this piece of wire but it works fine anyway 36 to 1 49 to 1 64 to 1 81 to 1 my most useful tap people wonder why should you have other taps other than 49 to 1 because the antenna is not 3500 ohms <laughs> Not always. Why limit yourself? Anyway, so that's the Anon FT120-43 7-tap Anon. And we'll see. Oh, um, hard to see, but I've got a uh, 150 picofarad cap, which right now is only connected to the ground side. And I'm going to show how this Anon performs with that 65 foot wire on various bands both with and without the 150 <laughs> the 150 peak compared shunt cap okay this is the unun test setup and Here we have the 65 foot long wire connected to the alligator clip. This is a ground connection that goes over to my bundle of ground wires and counterpoise wires. Um, I've tested the 
standing wave ratio with that connected and with it disconnected and there's no change and we're going to take a look at the uh, standing wave ratio on 40 20 15 and 10 meters hold on one moment and these are some notes that I took that I'll be looking at while I turn the camera at my MFJ SWR analyzer. I'm going to use that this time. One moment. And I'm going to start on 40 meters. <clears throat> and as my little cheat sheet shows, I'm going to be using the 81 to 1 tap which you can see I've made a connection to. One moment. Before we look at the SWR analyzer, I thought maybe I should mention, you might notice that I've got no extension and with a four inch extension there and there. <laughs> Hard to reach around the camera. You'll see why in a minute. Okay. I have the uh, wire connected to the 81 to 1 tap on the unun, and we'll see what kind of, we'll see where the resonant frequency lies and what the standing wave ratio is. Resonant frequency about 7116, SWR 1 1.2. So here's where, uh, when I first connected the wire, this is what I got. I looked at the uh, SWR up at the top of the phone then, and it was fine, 2.4. It's not great, but it's not terrible. And then I took a look at the bo very bottom of the band where I like to operate. I'm a QRP or into CW. And at the very bottom of the band, we're, we're looking at about 1.6 to 1. So this is where that little 4-inch extension can come in handy. I'm happy with the resonant frequency where it's at. I like it. I can operate up into the phone band. I mean, if I, I'm an extra class, if I work phone, it's probably going to be, you know, around 7125 to 7200 right in there. And, you know, my standing wave is great. I don't even need to run the internal tuner. I won't run the internal tuner. Unless I have to, and I never have to. Uh, rarely. <laughs> but here's where the 4-inch extension comes into play. And it'll be the same on the other bands. Let's go back down to the very bottom of the band. 7.702, that works. Standing wave ratio, 1.6 to 1. I'm going to pause this and put the little 4-inch clip lead on. Okay. And now you'll see that it dropped the standing wave ratio down nicely to 1.3. And now I could leave that clip lead on if I wanted to use the internal tuner. I'll run it back up to the top end of the band. Okay, about 3 to 1. I guess you could use it with the tuner. Uh, but with that 4 inch clip lead, you don't need to. Here, I'm going to leave it. Uh, I'm going to park it back here. Just to drive it home. Okay, 7296, that's the top of the band. SWR 2.6. I'm going to pause this, take that little 4 inch clip lead back off. And there you go. I took it back off, and with no other changes, it dropped the SWR from 2.6 to 1 to 2 to 1. And this is why I'm sold on um, having a uh, my unit within arm's reach. Well, more specifically because I'm going to be using other taps. And I'll show you that right now. I'm going to pause this and we'll go to 20 meters. And so <clears throat> I'm going to be using the 36 to 1 tap. And when I was testing, I saw I got a standing wave ratio of nearly a perfect match. Um, I'm going to pause this. And as you can see, I've moved my antenna wire clip lead to the 36 to 1 tap. Hang on. 
and we'll find the resonant frequency on 20 meters with the 36 to 1 tap. And it looks like it's right about there, 14.218, and that's without the little 4 inch lead, so that may, means it favors the top end of the band. Let's see what kind of standing wave ratio we have at the top end of the band. Past it. About 1.5 to 1. That's excellent. I have a feeling if we go all the way to the bottom of the band, it'll be a little high for my liking, given that I'm a CW op. So there, uh, <clears throat> losing my voice. Well, it's not bad. 1.6 to 1, what ish, <laughs> at the bottom, very bottom of the band. So you could cover all of 20 meters with it, just like that. But by inserting that 4-inch clip lead, I can drop my resonant frequency nicely. I'll show you. There we are at the bottom of the band. I'm going to put the clip lead back on. 1.6 to 1. Hang on. And that's with the 4-inch clip lead. 1.35 to 1. Um, but with the 4-inch clip lead, let's see where the resonant frequency is now. It was at 14.200-ish. So you can see that clip lead dropped the resonant frequency by 80 kilohertz. I have a feeling it'd be a little bit high at the top of the end of the band now. We'll see. And that's where that 4-inch clip lead, man, being able to add it or take it away. If you're If you're not into internal tuners like me, Having that ability is awesome. Standing wave ratio 1.8 to 1, 1.9 to 1. Whilst before it was, I forget, let's take a look. I'm going to take that extender back off. Yeah, so there you go. Um, that's kind of how I like using my end feds in general. I won't use a commercial antenna. I won't use a trap or an inductor in the antenna wire. I want just a piece of crap wire for my antenna. Um, so, and I don't want to use an internal tuner. So, my, my game plan <clears throat> is to get the antenna working higher in the band and then just add a little extender clip to drag it down into the CW portion of the band. Okay, let's take a look at 20, uh, 15 meters. Now you can see that for 15 meters, I got a great match using the 16 to 1 tap, but the resonant frequency is just under the 15 meter band, which is okay. I think it was broadbanded enough to be able to operate right up into the phone portion of the band. And I mentioned before that I wish I would have wound the un, -un with a 25 to 1 tap. Something between the 16 to 1 tap and the 36 to 1 tap. And this is where it would have come in handy. I would have been able to bring the resonant frequency up a little higher. Hang on. Okay. Here. You can see I've moved the antenna from the 36 to 1 tap over to the 16. Remember, they go 4, 9, 16, crosses over, 36, 49, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, hang on. Okay, we'll see where the resonant frequency is using that. Uh, what tap? The 16 to 1 tap, yeah. It looks like it's right about there, 20.965 megahertz. I played and played with this. Now this is the version without the 150 PF shunt cap. And it I believe it worked a lot better with that one. That version with the cap, we'll see. But this is the best I could do. I can't add the extender. Right now it's off. If I add it, it'll drop the resonant frequency even farther. But let's see what we can do. Whoa. Analyzer moves fast in 15 meters. So, you know, if I'm in the lowest end of the band, it's a great match. Right on up through the CW portion. So, 
Um, here's, boy, this thing moves fast, man. That's about the top of the band, right? 1.8 to 1. Um, and it drops quickly. You can run the phone portion of the band with a reasonable standing wave ratio and not have to run your internal tuner. So anyway, um, without that shunt cap though, on 10 meters, let me show you, nothing. Well, a little something something, but problematic. It's very problematic without the uh, shunt cap, but with it, it worked. It uh, seemed to work fine. We'll see. I'm not sure if I'm going to put that uh, on the end. This video is getting kind of long. I'll probably post that as a part two with the 150 PF shunt cap. Now, my brother Art, hopefully I gave you a nice son on, man. I gave you the granddaddy. Uh, better put it to use, boy. You need to get some wire up there, man. 73 art, 73, everyone. Anyone?